In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Switch Pod. I got to be honest, when I first saw this thing come onto the market, I wasn't too excited about it. I wasn't like, oh man, I got to get one. But when I went to Vid Summit last year, the people that actually founded and created this thing were there and they gave them to all the people that went to Vid Summit. I've had this piece of gear for a while now, more than half a year, and I haven't done a review on it because I wanted to actually use this in a bunch of different situations and give it a fair review. I didn't want to like the switch pod and the main reason for that was this guy the dincom systems action pod pro when i first saw the switch pod come onto the scene i thought it was just trying to fill a gap of what this thing could do if you've watched my channel for any amount of time you know how much i love the dincom systems action pod pro and for that reason i wasn't too psyched about the switch pod but the thing is these are two completely different tools, I would say, and I think they're priced well enough that you could purchase both of these and get just as much use out of both of them. This isn't going to be a review of the Dincom Systems Action Pod Pro. I'm just giving you my actual thought process of when this device came to market, I really thought that I could do everything with this. What a lot of people will say is that this is a direct competitor to the Joby tripod. And uh, I didn't really have any experience using the Joby tripod because I would use my Dincom Systems Action Pod Pro as my vlogging apparatus. This thing's strong enough to hold a camera on it like this. The cool thing about it is you can hang it from anywhere and really get a shot when you're in a pinch. But like I said, I feel like these two tools are in a different category. They both can do some amazing things. And as I have gotten to use the Switch Pod more, I've actually gravitated less towards the Dincom Systems Action Pod Pro and used this more for specific cases. But let's talk about what we came here for, the Switch Pod and how magnificently built this little tiny tripod is. To start off with, this thing is super flat and can fit into any backpack really quick. It is so fast to set up and tear down. Set up and tear down. Let me do that one more time. Set up and tear down. Oh my gosh, that's so fast. If you've known or seen the Switch Pod at all, you know that that's one of the coolest features is the way that you can flick out and bring it back in. Moving on to the actual grip of the Switch Pod, it's so intuitive. These grooves right here fit into your hand so well. Your finger just kind of sits right into the groove. And when you do hold it at length like this, it just makes sense. Like it gives you great extension on your field of vision. Just for those that want to know, this is the field of view you get at 24 millimeters. But if you wanted to go to 16, that's how wide it would get. Um, and this lens has optical steady shot. So is that better? I hope so. So what I like to do when I put a camera on the switch pod is actually line the camera up on a specific leg. So I'll point the lens this way on this specific leg. And the reason is this. When you put the switch pod in tripod mode, there is this stopper right here where the logo is. Once you hit the stopper right here, you can't go any further with the legs. So right now I'm squeezing inward this way and I can't make those legs go anymore. If I were to hold on a different side and squeeze in, now I'm collapsing the tripod, which is something that I don't want. What I like to do is put the lens on this specific leg, hold the tripod like this, and instead of holding the camera right here. Now I have two points of contact on the tripod and I've been using the switch pod a lot like this. I can still have that kind of looking down at my monitor, but get a little bit closer to what a person's point of view is near their eyeballs, as opposed to looking down from up at the chest level. It's really easy to one, use the force of my arms to push in this way to create a steady shot and also keep my arms near my body to keep the steady shot as well. One of the things I would critique about the switch pod is that the height at which the tripod is at isn't at eye level whenever you sit it on a surface. So for all the talking head videos or anything where you just wanna set up a camera on a surface really quick, it's not high enough 
to be at eye level. So what ends up happening most of the time is you'll need to take like a hard drive or some camera lens covers and elevate it so it gets to your level like this. Then you're going to be speaking down to the camera. But in all honesty, if they made this tripod taller just to address that issue, I think it would have to compromise on how maneuverable it is, if that makes sense. I actually like the height at which this is at. I just wish there was a way to magically, when you wanted to, raise it up so it was at eye level without having to put anything underneath it. I don't know how they would incorporate that. And I don't think that's a deal breaker or even like a con per se. That's just something that I've noticed that every single time I set this thing up on a table, I always have to put a wedge or something like this right here. And there's a third factor that I don't hear very many creators talking about when utilizing this piece of gear. And that's the like, fidget spinner-esque type of therapeutic de-stressor feeling that comes from using a device like this. I'll just explain what I mean. Number one is the way that this screw is designed, it just fits perfectly into your finger. So when you're holding the switch pod, one, your two fingers fit perfectly into the grooves on the switch pod right here. And two, this finger just kind of like fits into those notches right there, and it just spins indefinitely. I can't explain it, but it just feels good when you can sit here and you're maybe typing or you're doing something else, and you just keep spinning it like a fidget spinner. You just keep spinning it, and it's just something that you can fidget with with the Switch Pod. Is that cool? Yes. Do I even need to bring this up in the review? Trust me, when you get this thing, you're going to be fidgeting with it. The next fidgety thing is how this thing is balanced. What I find myself doing so many times is just sitting here, oh, is just doing this, flipping it. Every time you catch it, it just feels good. Doesn't that look, this is so cool. It's balanced so well that you can just sit here and do this. So trust me, when you have this thing, You'll find yourself doing that all the time. It's like if I don't throw axes, but it just like it feels like that. The last one is what I use <laughs> the switch pod more, probably even more than actually using it to hold a camera. And that's just to sit here and go like this. When I'm thinking of ideas creatively, I like to pace or whenever I'm trying to troubleshoot something, I'll just be walking up and down this room or anywhere in our house, really. And I'll take my switch pod and just walk around like this and just open it and close it, open it and close it. Like this all day long. Most underrated feature of the switch pod is definitely how it opens and closes and how satisfying it feels to open and close. I don't know what it's like to do the whole switch blade thing where you're like, you're flipping it open and you're doing all the things, but I imagine it feels something like when you're opening and closing the switch pod. The whole reason that works is because there's magnets right here on the legs that help keep it closed. Now, I've seen some people complain about how these magnets lose their, I guess, their tension when you hold it like this after a while. Um, but as you can see for me, I mean, I've been using this thing for half a year. And yes, if you hold it like this, the magnets are going to get undone. But the cool thing is, is like, like this, they still hold. And when I'm putting it in my bag, it still holds its form. It doesn't like get all whopper jawed. I think the magnets are fine. Um, Cody Warner has an amazing video about how to strengthen the magnets at the bottom of the switch pod. I'll link it in the description below. But to me, I don't have no qualms with how strong these magnets are. The next thing I want to point out here is two of the legs have tripod thread sized holes in them. So this leg right here and the leg on the other side. So you can put other adapters in your switch pod if you wanted to. This can stay on my table and it won't go anywhere because there are rubber stoppers on each leg. Each rubber stopper is still on there as solid as can be. I haven't had any trouble with these coming off the bottom of my switch pod. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I didn't really want to like this piece of gear because I liked my Dincom Systems Action Pod Pro so much and I feel like this wasn't getting enough Enough recognition in the creator community. But as time has progressed, I've been using my switch pod so 
much more because of the solid design. This thing is amazing, but it is plastic. This thing's metal and so much more rugged than the Dincom Systems Action Pod Pro. I know the limitations after using this for so long, but I'm not scared to put most cameras. I mean, if I had an RE or whatever, I'm not going to put that on my Action Pod Pro. But for most cameras, this thing is going to do such a phenomenal job. The other thing that has swayed my opinion on the Switch Pod is the actual origin story or creation of the Switch Pod itself. By knowing the story behind what went into creating this device, it makes me like the device so much more. If you haven't seen it, I'll try and put some video, if I can find it, of the origin story of how this thing came to be from the founders themselves, Pat Flynn and Caleb Wojcik. I actually got to meet Pat Flynn at Vid Summit, not the year that he uh, released this, but the year before, and I talked to him for about a minute or two. I wanted to thank him for showing me the ropes to podcasting. When it came to podcasting, his content was uh, a notch above the rest in terms of showcasing to me how to just start a podcast. And I haven't had a chance to talk to Caleb personally in real life, but if you ever tweet at SwitchPod, Caleb, or Pat, they are very quick to respond or at least say something. If you have any kind of qualms with this device, they put a lot of effort into designing this thing. And it shows just from the simplicity of being able to screw on a camera to how quick it is to open up the switch pod to putting it on a table to taking off the camera and then putting it back in your bag. It's so quick to do all of that. Another thing that they've continued to develop is now they have a ball head so you can swivel the camera and tilt it however you need to. I don't have that ball head, but if it has the same kind of ingenuity and time and effort that they put into the design of the actual tripod, I can guarantee you that that ball head is going to be just as sturdy, aesthetically pleasing, and functionally useful as the tripod itself. I have an affiliate link to the SwitchPod in the description below if you're interested in this piece of gear. If you're a content creator that needs to shoot a lot of things spur of the moment, I think this is a no-brainer when it comes to purchasing. But you may have something that works for you already, like I did with the Dincom Systems Action Pod Pro. But after using the SwitchPod for so long, uh, I've definitely found many places for it in my workflow. Until next episode, my name's Javier Mercedes. I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.